Welcome back everyone. Today we continue on in our Intro to Reduce series. For this video, I'll ask that you have a basic understanding of JavaScript, especially ES6. And hopefully you've been following along um, because I'm going to start to assume that you have the basic intuition for Reduce uh, going forward. Before we start, I want to motivate this lesson with a question. Have you ever had a situation like this? Let's say you have an array of objects, like our products array here. So each product will have two properties, type and color. And your job is to group the products together that have the same color. So you'd want some lookup table where the keys are the distinct colors, blue and red here, and the values are the products that have that color. Something like this. So maybe the context here is you're working on a page where the user can filter the products by color. So for example, if a user clicked on blue, only blue products would show on the page. But rather than filtering through the array of products every single time, you want to build up a cache. So in other words, we want to group the products together by color. Now the question is, how could we implement this using reduce? To start, let's create a function called group by. It expects two parameters, a key or property name to group the elements by, and the second parameter being an array of those elements. Okay, now let's go ahead and call the function below. So we're going to log the result of grouping the products by color, and our expected output should look exactly like the products by uh, color constant that we have right here. Now we can start thinking about the reducing part. So we're trying to collapse this list of objects into an object. So remember that in past videos, we've said that we can determine our accumulator based upon our output. Well, we know that we're going to be building up an object, so it seems like an empty object would be a nice starting point. Let's put that in now. Great, now let's start thinking about the reducing function. We've established a pattern in prior videos, so we can stub the reducing function following that pattern. Okay, remember that ACK here is uh, short for accumulator, and VAL is short for value for the current element that we're on as reduce traverses the array. Just to recap, reduce will iterate through every item in the array. The first time, ACK will be the empty object, our initial value in uh, the second argument to reduce. The VAL will be the first item in the array. The goal of the reducing function is to operate on the accumulator in the current value to produce a new accumulator. So we can always rename these parameters to uh, better capture the domain of the problem we're trying to solve. So how about we rename ACK to cache, since that's what we're building up? And how about we rename VAL to product? since that's what the elements will be in the array. Okay, so I want you to think about what data type this reducing function is going to return. Pause the video and think about that for a moment. I'll wait. That's right, the reducing function is going to return an object as output because that's what our final output is going to be. So we have a decision to make here. We can either mutate the cache or create a new object with all the key value pairs from the cache that's passed in and just update what we need. Let's go ahead and use the spread syntax to create and return a shallow copy of the cache that's passed in. And we'll change what we need in a minute. By the way, if you're confused about this syntax right here, um, with arrow functions, if you use an implicit return and you want to return an object literal, you have to wrap the curly braces in parens. Otherwise, the curly braces will be uh, understood to be a block, just like in a normal function. Okay, so obviously we can't just return a new object that would return uh, the same object every time and we would just get an empty object at the end. So we're gonna have to do a bit more work than that. So we know that the keys of this cache will be the distinct colors, blue and red, and we're iterating over the products. So we can just add a key or a, a property to this cache using variables using the bracket syntax, like so. For our example, we'll need to get the value for the color property uh, on the product. We can use the bracket syntax here as well. 
Okay, so we've created a key. Um, what will the value be? Well, let's think about that for a second. For the first time through the array, in our example, cash will be an empty object. Then we're going to return a new object with the key of blue because the first product in our products array has blue as its color. And the value for the key of blue will be an array with a product in it. Simple enough, let's write that out. So I just realized I made a mistake. Um, this is supposed to be a comma here. So let me put that now. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, so this is the result of spreading the object uh, key value pairs into this new object that we're creating. And we're creating a new key. And the value, for right now at least, will be the product just plopped into an array. But wait, what about the second time we get a product with the color of blue? With this code, we would just override the value every single time. We want to be able to concat on this array here uh, if the key of blue already exists on the cache. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, let me see if I can uh, clean some of this up so it's easier to read. Okay, so let's go over this and uh, we can refactor to use some intermediate variables to make it clearer. I like to read this as follows. In the case that the property already exists on the cache, we want to concat the product onto the array. Else, we should just return an array with the product in it. Let's actually run this uh, to see if it works and we'll refactor it here in a second. Okay, so hopefully that's not too hard to see. So you can see we have an object where the products have been grouped together by color. Uh, in fact, it should look exactly like our um, constant up here, our products by color. So where we have blue, we have blue, and uh, we got red, and we have red, and they have all of their corresponding products. Okay, so let's refactor this. Okay, there we are. I just uh, kind of plopped that in, uh, pasted, so I didn't waste too much time. This should be much easier to read. So. For clarity, we are now storing an intermediate variable called property. It will be equal to the value of the product we're on at the specific key passed in. If the property already exists in the cache, for example, uh, blue, um, then we need to go ahead and uh, assume that there's already an array on there and we're going to concatenate the new product onto that array. Else, if the property wasn't on the cache, so for example, um, you know, the first time we see red, then we're just gonna return a new object and we're gonna put red as the property on there and then we'll plop the product into an array by itself. So let's go ahead and see if this works. You should be able to see that that's exactly the same as the output we had before and it is. So great, that ended up uh, solving our problem and this is probably much easier to read. Well, that about does it for this video. We learned how to group an array of objects by a property. Now this function isn't the most optimal, but again, this is a series on Reduce, so that's the tool du jour. So as always, if you have a question, uh, leave me a comment below. And if you like the video, please consider subscribing, liking, and hitting that bell icon. Thanks everyone.